Good riddance, 2020. And thank God that there were some pretty great VR games to distract us. So here's my picks for the top 10 Steam VR games of 2020. Starting with number 10, Spellbound Spire. You may have seen me feature this in my recent top free VR games video, which I'll link to below. But this game is so good that it made its way into my main top 10 as well. It's a room scale puzzle game that requires you to physically walk throughout your play space. It uses impossible geometry that enables you to walk a continuous path within your room. If you've played T for God, then you get the idea of how the movement works in this game. But I actually like this a lot more than T for God because it isn't just a demo. It's a complete and well-crafted puzzle game that kept on surprising me the more I played it. This puzzle game keeps adding more gameplay mechanics and new puzzle challenges every step of the way. Just when I thought I've seen it all, the game surprises me with even more ingenuity and creativity. And besides the impressive puzzle design, the ambience and architecture are really fun to take in. I felt like I was actually exploring a new magical world. It recommends a play space of 3 meters by 3 meters, but most people don't have that. So to play with less space, it has a unique feature called boosted movement. So every move you make gets multiplied by a value that ensures you can play in a smaller space. For me personally, the effect felt subtle and quite natural. You absolutely have to play this game. It took me about 40 minutes to beat it the first time I played, and there's an easter egg that incentivizes you to play the game a second time. Spellbound Spire is a must have in your library. Number 9. Cubism is a deceptively simple puzzle game where you need to combine various puzzle pieces to fill in spaces. And just looking at the footage, you can instantly see how you play the game, which is a great testament to how elegant the design of this game is. At first glance, you might think to yourself this game looks easy, and if you're thinking that, then my friend, you are in for a real surprise, because this game eventually becomes bonkers difficult. You would be surprised how many times you're close to solving a puzzle, but you were just one or two shapes off from the required solution. This puzzle game is simply delightful. It features beautiful minimalism, and it's very satisfying to play. After about six hours of playtime, I'm totally stumped on the last set of levels. So for the price of $10, you get a lot of bank for your buck. It's a must-have for any puzzle fan. Number 8. Paper Beast is an otherworldly puzzle adventure in a fantasy landscape populated with origami wildlife. This is a very abstract puzzle game, the likes of which I haven't seen before. The first half of the game was mostly taking in the scenery and learning the game mechanics. All of the gameplay is learned by discovery, and it took me a while before I really understood the rules of this universe. And in some ways, I was still learning up until the very end. There are seven chapters in total, with three to four scenes within each chapter. And each scene presents a unique challenge. None of the puzzles felt repeated to me. You have some control over the world around you, but not that much. Some props you can move around, and even some animals, but you're not an all-powerful being. For movement, there's both sliding and teleporting. I really enjoyed the atmosphere of this game. It's a fascinating and beautiful world to behold. With a sometimes touching, but often perplexing storyline. After you beat the story campaign, you get a god mode sandbox where you can do whatever you want with much more power than you had in the campaign. This mode really shows off the sand and water physics of the game engine, which I found impressive, given how well the game performs. I really loved playing this, but it is a little short for the price of $20, since I beat it in 3 hours. Although to be fair, there are some things in the sandbox mode that can only be unlocked by finding hidden items in the main campaign. It's a beautiful and strange escape that I do recommend, but you'll definitely want to take your time in this world, given the relatively short length of the game.
Number 7. The Morrigan tells the tale of a foolish king that gave his daughter to an evil queen to save his kingdom. So, of course, you've got to rescue her. It's a lightly story-driven dungeon crawler. You traverse through obstacle course climbing, simple puzzles, avoiding traps, etc. The combat is fantastic. The physics are very well done, with the striking and parrying feeling legit. It's quite satisfying to engage in the swordplay. The sound design also helps enhance the combat and makes it feel intense. Oh, and there is archery, but I think the up-close combat is the good stuff. I find the minimal visual design to be a cool look. It kind of reminded me of Vanishing Realms. Throughout your dungeon crawling, you'll be able to store healing potions and food. But be on the lookout for hidden coins. Because you can spend them at the market for more specialized potions, food, and weapons. You can also unlock more weapons by playing the arena combat zone. The weapons you unlock here can be used in the campaign. And for the completionist, in the campaign there are secret areas to find inside each level. For locomotion, there's both sliding and teleporting, and there's comfort options as well. There's three difficulty modes, and I beat the campaign on normal difficulty in a little over four hours. I thoroughly enjoyed playing this. The combat is absolutely the best part of the game, and it made the entire journey a lot of fun. The regular price is $20. Number 6. Into the Radius is one of the rare examples of a game that had a rough launch into early access, but continued steady development and improvements to eventually blossom into an impressive full game. In a post-apocalyptic world, you need to explore a large open area to accomplish various missions like item retrieval or killing ghostly creatures. All the while, a mysterious narrative unfolds on how to find another lost soul that keeps reaching out to you. Beautiful, isn't it? At least it used to be. You can see everything from up here. Not that I ever climbed it myself, but I imagined what it would be like. This game is very hands-on and tactile, from the way you sort your inventory, load your ammunition, or interact with your map. You can really tell this was made from the ground up for VR. I found this to be incredibly difficult, even on easy setting. I was getting totally destroyed by both environmental dangers and roaming enemies. Stealth is critical to your survival and this won't be a simple walk in the park. The overall atmosphere is awesome. It feels like a truly unique game world. There's also a lot of play in here. The story campaign can keep you busy for well over 10 hours, plus more randomly generated missions beyond the story campaign. Into the Radius is both beautiful and creepy, with incredibly challenging gameplay. If you're looking for a unique stealth exploration game, then I highly recommend it. The price is $30, and I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. For movement, there's only sliding, but there are comfort options to help with motion sickness. This is Admiral Akbar to Echo Squadron. Number 5. Echo Leader here. Admiral, any luck pinpointing that distress call? You might have heard of a small indie movie called Star Wars, and in 2020, we got a pretty cool space combat game based off of it. Understood, sir. Echo, prepare for systems check. The combat itself isn't necessarily groundbreaking, but it's so well polished overall that it feels like you're actually inside a Star Wars movie. The visuals are outstanding, and the action is incredibly exciting. Starting another attack run. 
This isn't a complex flight simulator, it's straightforward arcade action, which I personally prefer. There's a single player story campaign that's surprisingly well fleshed out in my opinion. You switch sides between the Rebels and the Empire, and in between missions you get to meet your other squad members, which fills in the story and makes the universe feel more alive. The writing itself won't necessarily win any awards, but that's okay. Now, let's get serious, huh? When are you gonna have a premonition about the Karelian Lottery? Really? People are waiting for us to save them, and you're thinking about credits. Look, you see any numbers, just tell me, okay? They gotta be good for something. <laughs> Besides the single player campaign, there's also multiplayer, which is where most of the replayability is. This game doesn't use motion controllers, but you can use a keyboard and mouse, gamepad, or HOTAS. The regular price is $40, and it's a lot of fun. Nice work. Squadron for Rad. I think we're clear. For now. Number four. Fireproof Games is the developer behind the insanely successful puzzle series The Room, which originally came out for mobile devices. The latest installment in the franchise is The Room VR A Dark Matter, which was built from the ground up exclusively for VR. The core of the game is about mechanical puzzle boxes, but there's a deep and cinematic narrative as well. You're a detective investigating the disappearance of an esteemed Egyptologist, and your journey for answers will take you to many places filled with mystery and magic. Besides the introductory detective office, there are four realms of puzzles with distinct designs. Within each of these realms are puzzle challenges that are meticulously crafted and original. Every challenge is unique and the game stays fresh the whole time. Each of the realms is also quite sizable. You'll be teleporting around a lot and traveling back and forth between puzzles, since you'll often add things to your inventory that were unlocked in one area to advance farther for a puzzle in another area. Traveling through the big areas gave me a sense of exploration and investigating, since you're not just solving one puzzle at a time, you're seeing how all of the puzzles are interconnected. The game will also frequently change your perspective, whether it be shrinking you so you can go inside a machine, or granting you a special lens to see more than you have before. As far as the puzzles themselves, they are expertly crafted. This is one of the best puzzle games I've ever played. The interactions with gadgets are legit and feel satisfying. I was definitely stumped more than a few times, and thankfully there's a time-delayed hint system for when you do get stuck. There are some moments of spooky ambience like ghostly whispers or menacing tendrils appearing, but it's not really scary at all. I found it incredibly addictive, and whenever I started playing it, it was hard to put down. I beat it in a little over three hours, and I loved every minute of it. The regular price is a little steep at $30, but even at this price, I highly recommend it. Number 3. Vertigo Remastered The original Vertigo came out in 2016, and at the time, it was a refreshing narrative journey. Fast forward to today, and Vertigo Remastered is here with the same original story, but literally every element of the game has been massively upgraded and now sits among the best top tier VR games that you can find. It's a story based action shooter and puzzler. Personally, I didn't understand the story at all, but there were still lots of little story elements that I found funny and enjoyable. They said this guy was last locked being in this lab, but I couldn't get in, so I've been waiting here for... Oh, it's been 450 days now. This game has a great sense of humor, which fits perfectly with the brightly colored visual style. You could also think of this like a cartoony version of Boneworks, since the interactivity is excellent, and the weapons are satisfying to use. Along your journey, you'll find goop that will earn you upgrades, and you'll need to be selective on the upgrades you want. Do you want better weapon recoil, or a farther teleport reach? Things like that. The main story campaign took me about three hours to beat, and it's very good, 
but the exceptional stuff is the Sandbox DLC, which provides more game modes to the campaign, but more importantly, a very powerful in-VR level creator and editor. It has an intuitive interface and a robust toolset, including custom triggers for events, and optional clear conditions for the levels. It's one of the best in-VR creation tools I've ever seen. And of course, you can download levels made by others. There's a lot to choose from, but thankfully, you can sort by popular to see the best at a glance. So even if you feel the campaign is short, the Sandbox DLC increases the playtime dramatically. Vertigo Remastered supports both teleporting and sliding movement. The base game is $25, the DLC is an additional $8. Number 2. Usually games based on TV shows or movies aren't very good, but The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is the exception that proves the rule. It's the best zombie game I've ever played on any platform. It's tempting to classify this as survival horror, but I actually view it more like a role-playing game. There's an interesting storyline that drives the whole campaign. I understand. It's almost impossible to know who to trust. Alright, then we're on the same page. I'll get to the point. Why are you helping me? You'll need to constantly be on the lookout for supplies and items that you can salvage for crafting. And you'll also meet lots of NPCs that give you side quests and fill in the world with more narrative to make it more alive. Meet me on the opposite side of this building. Can't risk being overheard or seen. Speaking of NPCs, zombies aren't your only concern in this apocalyptic world. You'll have to deal with some unfriendly humans as well. Chicken shit. All of the melee combat in this game is gruesomely satisfying. There are multiple ways to kill zombies, but the most convenient way is to grab their head and stab them with sharp objects. As you collect scraps and upgrade your crafting ability, you'll then be able to create ranged weapons. Or even more brutal melee weapons. You'll also need to craft healing items and food. The bandages are applied by wrapping around your arm. Which I find to be an ingenious use of motion controllers. You're granted a lot of freedom in the campaign, so you can take your time during quests just collecting items to build up your arsenal. It is kind of a slow game, so it's best if you take your time to enjoy it. If you like zombie games, then you really have to play this game. With Saints and Sinners, the bar has been raised for VR RPGs. It's a blast. The only mode of movement is sliding, but there are comfort options to help with motion sickness. The price is $40. Before getting to number one, I want to showcase my honorable mention for this list, and I'm including it for its innovation and the new possibilities it provides. The honorable mention is Portable Farm. It's a mini game that can be played on top of any other VR game. Your farm grows all the time in the background, so the intention is to check in with your farm every once in a while and then close it again to get back to your main game. The farm opens and closes with a specific hand gesture. What I find so cool about this is the way you can view and interact with the farm. There's a window portal which allows you to see your farm, and that window is freely movable. Additionally, the farm itself also has handles to position independently of the portal window. After you grow enough crops, you can then sell them for cash to plant more crops or start to decorate your farm. I think this could usher in a whole new era of minigames in VR. And I hope that Portable Farm is just the beginning. The price is $5, and there's a free demo available so you can test to see if your system can handle it. And now for the number one game of the year that will surprise absolutely nobody. Half-Life Alex was the most highly anticipated VR game of all time, especially since the world had been waiting over a decade for a follow-up to the Half-Life series. 
The expectations for this game couldn't be higher, and in many ways, it still surpassed them. I have a brain injury. Um, I'm sorry, Dan. My brain is injured. That's terrible, Ow. and I hope... Look, I'm actually pretty busy looking for my father. Alex is, hands down, the best looking and best sounding VR game that I've ever witnessed. The world is richly detailed on a level that I've never experienced before. There it is. That elevator will take me up to the substation. But beyond the presentation, the high degree of interactivity really drives the immersion home. The game world is heavily populated with props, and it's all interactable with realistic physics. The sheer number of objects that you can manipulate makes the world feel truly alive, and it's all of these little details that sets apart this game from the rest. Playing through the campaign never gets boring. It's designed with the same DNA that Half-Life 2 has, with constantly evolving gameplay and new mechanics intentionally paced out. So with every new level in the campaign, you know there will be surprises in store. But even beyond the campaign is the amazing modding community that's adding new maps and even entirely new campaigns into the game. I'll link to my playlist below for recommended Alex mods, and within that list, there's a ton of new adventures to be had that add dozens of hours of additional gameplay. Testing and reviewing new Alex mods is something I greatly enjoy. It's so fun to revisit this game with fresh new maps, and thanks to the modding community, Half-Life Alex provides both quality and quantity of gameplay. It's the game that keeps on giving. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya!